Hey everybody, welcome to the first video of our AI in Node.js tutorial series. I am Paul Van Eck, and I am with the Cognitive Open Tech Group at IBM. The topic for this video is all about how you can get started with machine learning in Node.js. Here, we will introduce TensorFlow.js and how it can easily be used to create deep learning applications in a Node environment. For this series, we expect users to have basic knowledge of Node.js and some familiarity with AI and machine learning concepts. Links to the full tutorial and source code can be found in the description below. Now let's get started. So why AI in JavaScript? Well, JavaScript is one of the core web technologies that we interact with in the browser. And the ability to do training and inference in the browser while tying in capabilities such as data privacy and interactivity can spawn many cool applications. From a server-side perspective, being able to practice AI in a language and ecosystem many developers are already most familiar with is a benefit in its own right. JavaScript, after all, is up there in terms of popularity and usage. The smaller footprint and fast startup time of Node.js can be an advantage when deployed in containers and IoT devices. This brings us to TensorFlow.js, which makes AI in JavaScript possible. TensorFlow.js is an open source software library for JavaScript developers to create and use machine learning models directly in the browser or in Node.js. We will be focusing on the Node side of things in this video with TFJS Node. Now let's get started by setting up a new Node project. Make a new directory called tfjs-project, navigate into it, and initialize it with npm init. All we gotta do is install tfjs node with the npm install at tensorflow slash tfjs node command. This installs the CPU tfjs node package, and this may take a while as it downloads lib tensorflow, the tensorflow C binary that tfjs node binds to. If you have a CUDA enabled NVIDIA GPU, you can certainly install the GPU version. However, this tutorial will assume that the CPU version is installed. So with the project set up, let's talk about how to quickly bootstrap your Node AI app. Here we have two options. One, use package NPM modules that load pre-trained models for you. Or option two, we load and use the converted TensorFlow.js model directly. We will talk more about converting in the next tutorial. So first, let's go with option one, the easiest option where we use NPM modules. Here, we are going to install the object detection Coco SSD package with another npm install command. Easy enough. Now let's use it in a simple node app in a file called index.js. This small bit of code is all that is needed to load our object detection model and do some object detection on a given image. Before I explain the code, let's first run it with node using the image in the script. The output will give you a list of detected objects with the class name, score, and bounding box coordinates for where each object is located in the image. So looking back at the code, first we use require to get the Coco SSD module. We also require TFJS node for its utility functions. Then the final require is for the FS module to enable us to load an image from the file system. After loading all this, we then load the Coco SSD pre-trained model and image file at the same time. Both of these return promise objects and the results are returned in the following then callback function. The first object is a loaded model instance, and the second object is the image content as a buffer. Next, we use the image decoder APIs provided by TFJS node to decode the raw image data into a tf.tensor3d object. Tensors are n-dimensional arrays that act as TensorFlow's fundamental data structure for passing around and manipulating data. This tensor3d object can be passed to the detect method of the loaded model for inference. This returns another promise, where we use the next callback for printing out predictions. And that's it, the NPM package does most of the heavy lifting for you. Now let's talk about option two, as not all models we want to use are nicely packaged like the object detection model. First, let's take a look at the model types TFJS node supports. We will mainly focus on the TFJS specific formats first. So let's first make a file called run tfjs model.js in a project directory and add this code to it. As you can see here, I am loading the model from TensorFlow Hub with a TF Hub URL using the Load Graph Model API. We then log the output. So now let's try running it. Yep, that's our model, complete with metadata, operations, weight info, etc. To run an inference on the model, we need to provide an image as input. Since the model expects a four dimensional tensor of image pixel values, the image will need to be processed into the appropriate shaped tensor before it can be passed to the model. Let's add the following pre-processing code to the file we just made. Here we convert an image to a 3D tensor using a decode image API. Then we will increase the dimensions to four with the expand dims method as the model we are using expects a four dimensional input shape. Next, update the run code to allow passing in the path to an image. 
Run the app again, and this time the model is loaded, the image pre-processed, and the resulting image tensor is displayed. Now we gotta use the model for inference with our newly created image tensor. All model APIs provide a predict function. However, for graph models with dynamic ops like our model, let's use something called execute async in a new function called run model. We will update the run code down here to pass the image file to the model and get a prediction. Let's save and run the file one more time. Here we see the output is an array containing two tensors. However, this isn't quite yet useful to us. We need to do some post-processing. Typically, when you perform post-processing, you need to know the output format of the model. In this case, the output is two tensors, with the first tensor containing each class's score for each bounding box found, the second tensor containing the coordinates of each bounding box. First, we create a helper function for extracting the max score and corresponding class for each bounding box found. This class will expect the first tensor we got in the predictions output from before. Here, we synchronously download the values from the input tensor with data sync. This is how we get the tensor values into a typed array we can use with regular JavaScript. The output we get here is a flattened float32 array. Then for each bounding box returned, we find the class with the highest score. Next, we need to add a helper function to perform the non-maximum suppression of bounding boxes. Well over a thousand bounding boxes can be returned with many bounding boxes overlapping and identifying the same object. Non-max suppression is a technique to ensure a particular object is identified only once. Here we get and return the indices for the top five bounding boxes selected. With these two helper functions for processing the two output tensors, let's create one more function to formulate a nice JSON response. Here we make a reference to a labels.js file, which is also found in the link repo below. This file contains a mapping of the object labels to their index values returned by the model. Lastly, we make a wrapper function for all of this called process output where we connect all these pieces. Then all we gotta do is call this from the run code at the bottom. Let's run the app again. And there we have it, a functioning AI app using Node.js. Object detection has a bit more involved output preprocessing. But if dealing with simple classification models, it could be as simple as just mapping an index to a labels array. We could enhance our node app even more by generating an output image with the bounding boxes and labels printed on. Code for this is also in the repo if you want to take a look. So that about covers it for this video. Here you learn how JavaScript can be used as a tool for AI development through TensorFlow.js. We looked at how we can bootstrap the AI capabilities of our Node.js apps by using prepackaged node modules. And we also covered how we can load and use JavaScript friendly models by using the TensorFlow.js APIs, showing the pre-processing and post-processing steps along the way. Stay tuned for more videos in this series to learn more about AI in Node.js. Thanks for watching.